Hello, everybody. Welcome back to part three of the this uh, this series. Thanks for uh, coming back, and thanks for watching the uh, the the first two. This is where we left it. Uh, if you recall, last time we had fetched a, a series of contacts from a RESTful API. We turned those into a list. We'd uh, put them in a block, and we were refer referencing that block to display this list, and then to pull up the detail uh, on any of these contacts right here. Uh, and it, it works. Uh, this would be fine for an app of this size. Uh, what I didn't like about it, though, is that uh, the structure of the data was dependent on a stateful widget. And so we'd like to remedy that today. We're going to add in a provider. We're going to add in a repository uh, and set this up so that it, this, if this app needed to grow, uh, it would be structured in a way that you could very clearly tell where the data was coming from uh, and you have separated your concerns. You've got your presentation in your widgets and then you have a, a series of, of back-end Dart classes that are supporting the data. Uh, so this is what we have. We have a widget. It's referencing a block. The block is going out and getting an API, uh, data from an API. A and that's all fine, except that the block was dependent on the widget, the state of the widget, uh, telling it to go out to the API and get that data and put it in the block so then the widget could then reference that, that information. Uh, let's change that a little bit in this video. What I'd like to do is throw a couple of objects in the middle here. I would like to put block here. And then I'd like to throw a repository in the mix. And then a provider that's going to go and see if I can stack this all on the screen. <laughs> there we go. We have the block reference of repository. A repository is going to go to a provider, and the provider is going to go out to the API. Like so. And this is going to be structured in such a way, we're not going to do it, but if you had multiple uh, APIs that you were hitting or concerns, you could wrap those in the repository so that there would be multiple data sources down here accessing different information, but the block would just be representing or just referencing that one repository. So this is what we're going to try to do today. So let's start by creating the two elements that we don't have, which is our repository and our provider. Um, and so let's start by creating a new folder in our project. So inside of SRC, we're going to create a new folder called data. And in data, we're going to create two files. We're going to create JSON placeholder dot excuse me, let's change the name of that. I'm going to call it JSON placeholder underscore provider dot dart so it's clear what it is. And then we're going to create repository.dart. All right, so let's start with a JSON placeholder. And what we want to accomplish here is our provider. And the provider is going to be where we keep all our CRUD operations. So those can be kind of messy, but we're going to put those CRUD operations for each API, which is just only one in this scenario, uh, in the provider so that those are all in one place and they're not cluttering up the repository or the block. So we will do that first. So I'm going to need a couple of imports. We're going to need uh, HTTP because this is where we're going to put our get for our RESTful API. We're going to need dart convert. And we're going to import that as convert. And we're going to import the HTTP, as you see above, as HTTP. We will create a class, and we will call it JSON placeholder provider. 
and it is called that because JSON placeholder is the API we are accessing to get our data. And now I'm going to go to the block because what we're really doing is we are extracting this. We don't want the block to be fetching our data anymore. So we're just going to cut that. Move it to into JSON placeholder provider and we'll just paste it in there. So we need to import our contact model. So I'm just going to use the auto import. So we'll get this up here. And we in our block, we had to change contacts which populated our stream. And so here in our uh, provider, we just want to return those contacts. We don't have a stream to add to there. So that is, and I'll just expand this a little bit. Uh, that is all there is to this because we don't have a, a put or a, a, a post uh, method here. So this is just our CRUD operations, but it just turns out to be our, our getter. Um, and so then in our repository, We want to create class repository. We want to bring in that provider. Uh, if you had multiple providers, so if we had a JSON placeholder, uh, and then maybe we had an API where we went out and verified their phone number, uh, we would bring in both of those. We don't, we just have one, but just to, I just want to underscore the repository, there just should be one of them. All right, and so I'm gonna use the auto import to bring that in. We're gonna call it JSON provider. And we're just gonna create an instance of that provider. And we're only gonna have one method here. We're gonna have a future because our JSON is going to return a future. Uh, it is going to be of type contact because in this logic here, we built in the logic to convert the JSON into a list of contacts. We did that in the last time. We will call it fetch contacts. Uh, it is going to be a sync. And we want to await JSON provider dot fetch contacts. We need to bring in our contact model. Let's do that. And void a future list. All right. And that error is because I'm returning a void. So let's go back to JSON placeholder. Uh, we had a void in the method we copied and pasted from the block but we actually are now returning a list of type contact. So, and we'll save that. That should resolve our error in the repository and it does. So I'll save that as well. Okay, so we've got our provider, we've got our repository. We're adding extra layers here. You can see each layer doesn't have a, a tremendous amount of information, so it is pretty uh, pretty clean and efficient and easy to follow. So let's go back to our contact block and let's fix that. Okay, so we need to create a way to substitute the loading up of the data from the stateful widget. So if you recall, uh, our stateful widget right here would load uh, when the state was initiated that would cause the call to the block that would load up go get the api and load up this stream and right now nothing is doing it so we're going to build a constructor and we're going to use the constructor of the block so whenever the context block is constructed or created uh, that's when we want it to go out there 
fetch the, the, the data from the API and load it up to the block so that we can, we can reference it. So we need a method to do that. So down here below dispose, I'm going to build a function called underscore fetch contacts and it's underscored because I don't want it accessible outside of this block. So underscore makes it private. And let's bring in a Not there. Let's bring in a copy of our repository. So we want a final repository underscore repository again because I want that to be private. And that's going to create an instance <clears throat> of our repository. Right. So down here in our fetch contacts, we can go back to that repository, fetch our contacts. And remember that is going to give us a future list of those contacts. And uh, we don't want that here. We want to dump that into the stream uh, so that we can stream it out to <clears throat> our front end. So we will do a dot then. We will, inside of parentheses, we will create contacts. And so this is where we'll call our change contacts method. So we will create the contacts um, and then we will pass the contacts into the change contacts, which you recall from the last one was uh, what loads up our stream right here. And so we have that method. Now we can reference it right here. And that way, whenever an instance of this block is created, and remember, you only really create the block once, and then we pass around instances of it um, with the contact provider. That's what goes out and gets that instance. Uh, so this is a good place to go ahead and create those those contacts and dump them into the into the stream. Now, why here versus the repository? The repository is going to be general. Uh, if you had multiple blocks, if you had, say, a user block because you had a login and you had to know uh, information about that user, um, you are going to you're going to initialize a repository there. So, if you were to initialize the data in the repository, every block that called that would go out and fetch that information and have that information uh, in the repository. And we don't need that for our instance of the repository. We just want to make sure that when a contacts block is initiated, that this block, with its reference of the repository, goes out gets that information, those contacts, passes it into the stream so that we can then uh, access it later. So we can take these two imports out of the top because we don't need them anymore because we move that functionality into our provider. And then our last step is to come in here to our home uh, page. This was a stateful widget. We had a block. We had a method called fetch contacts, and we no longer need that. because we are not using this to initiate the uh, initiate the data call. And this needs to become a, or can become a stateless widget now. Um, it's stateful. I guess there's no reason not to, uh, you could keep it stateful. I'm going to make it stateless just to kind of underscore the fact that we don't need uh, this widget anymore to keep track of what's going on with the data. We've separated that concern. So let's just do stateless widget. I'm going to eliminate this create state and the bottom bracket here. This no longer needs a class. Um, I don't know how I got Flutter semantics in there, so we'll get that out of there. And seems happy. I'll go ahead and do a format. And there we go. So because I've changed state, it does not like that. Um, when you do that, change a widget from stateless to stateful or, or back. So we're just going to go ahead and hot restart. Okay, so there is our list. It went, it got the information. We click on any one of these people and we get the detailed information. So we are now doing with a stateless widget what we were doing with a stateful widget before. This widget, this homepage widget, this contact widget, None of them have any role in creating the data. They just simply say, I'd like an instance of the block. The backend handles all that. It recognizes that an instance of the block was created. 
that triggers the fetch context, which goes to the repository, which goes to the provider. So this is a very neat, very organized way to structure your data. If you reference this information later and it's, you know, something is null, you're not diving into your widgets to figure out why it wasn't initiated in the first place. So, uh, the block pattern gets called the block pattern. The more research I've done, uh, the more I've kind of realized there really doesn't seem to be one block pattern. And I'm not sure there should be. There's got to be some flexibility in here uh, when you create this information. But this is a way that makes sense to me and works for me uh, when we're going to get, get RESTful API data. Uh, now, if you were to mix in Firestore here, Firestore, I think if you bring that in here, th this creates a stream. You can subscribe to it. Uh, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to add all these different layers uh, down here. So what I tend to do when I have Firestore is to just go ahead and draw my connection directly from my block straight down to uh, Firestore, which kind of ends up being a provider, really, because you write a, uh, a series of CRUD operations for, uh, for Firestore here. So I pass through. I guess that's not a good example because I'm going right underneath the uh, repository. I actually skip the repository and I will have the block go right to, to Firestore uh, rather than have a stream here, reference a stream here, and then you reference it again here in the block. I mean, at that point, you, you just uh, cl stubbornly clinging to a pattern that isn't really making sense and isn't really doing anything for you at that point. The point would be that you can take the widget, you can directly access the block and say, hey, I want login information. Uh, that block's going to go and get that information from where it makes sense. That's that's what the block pattern is really about, not sticking to some rigid pattern throughout here. So there you go. There's one way to structure a block application to go out and get uh, get that data. Uh, next time, I'd like to go into back into the RESTful uh, data, and we're going to dive a little deeper. You saw there were some, if you were in part two or one, there was some nested information there. Uh, in the RESTful data that you had to go down a few layers to get. Uh, I'd like to come back and grab some of that data because it gets a little tricky with the modeling. Uh, and then we'll come back for, I guess, a fifth, yeah, fifth uh, segment, make this look pretty, uh, and then we will, we will be done with it. So thanks for watching so far. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe as you have been doing, and thank you for that. And hopefully, hopefully we'll see you in the next video.